Hello everyone, today is Sunday, September 9, 2012, and this is a quick update on some of the projects that I have going on. First, uh, I just want to say that uh, here in Burlington, Connecticut, today is Tavern Day. Uh, Rossi has released his third-party data at the ongoing Zurich ECAT conference, which Sterling Allen is reporting from live as I record this, and uh, Smart Scarecrow is rebroadcasting. So for those of you who would like to watch uh, some of this conference, either live or recorded and, and re-uploaded to YouTube, I would go to smartscarecrow.com, take a look at the Zurich ECAT conference videos. Um, want to bring you up to date on what's going on with the recumbent bicycle. It is almost complete and uh, just want to go through a few quick photos here of some of the progress that I've made and where, where it's headed. So in this first photo you see where I have uh, stiffened up the frame with the tube along the, uh, along the top side there and the, the triangular uh, brace and Screwed to the main portion of the frame is a tray that I made out of aluminum angle stock to support the three 7.2 ampere hour 12 volt gel cell batteries. Uh, that gives me a 36 volt potential when the, when the batteries are wired in series and a 12 volt potential when they are in parallel. This is a, a very rough draft schematic diagram that I drew uh, showing the switching relays between the banks of batteries or between the batteries that automatically put them in series and parallel when I want to accelerate slowly, accelerate fast, or perform regenerative braking while the bike is coasting fast and I put a 12 volt potential across a motor that wants to see 36. The MOSFET is replaced by a third relay that is uh, just actuating, you know, turning the, uh, the controller on and off. Here is the controller that, uh, that I completed. You'll notice there are several diodes in there. I will publish the finished schematic diagram once it's done, but it's a very simple circuit. It doesn't require hardly any electronics knowledge. All you need to do is to be able to solder point to point on the relay contacts and shove it into a box. Uh, very simple. This is a shot of the frame that I mounted the MY1016 electric motor on. Again, it's constructed out of uh, aluminum angle stock and uh, it, it, it didn't turn out quite as, as clean looking as I wanted it to. Um, you'll notice that the, at the bottom near the swing arm I had to brace it um, I had a couple of other ideas that I wanted to use. Here's another, here's another angle of that uh, same uh, assembly. You'll notice that the, the chain is quite long. And what I found later on is that uh, there's a l quite a bit of slop in the chain. The chain is allowed to uh, wobble back and forth. And when I took it out for the first test drive, uh, I ran into a small problem. Uh, this is the control mechanism for the relay control box. You notice I have a black button and a red button, and the relay control box is just tie wrapped to the frame behind the batteries. Um, I have quick disconnects for the motor in case anything goes severely wrong with the relay control box. I just reach forward and yank the wires out and coast to a stop safely, I hope. And um, the, the buttons are, of course, red for high speed, black for low speed, and if I'm cruising at high speed and I press the black button, it will actually back feed the batteries and, and cause regenerative braking on the pack. So, very simple circuit and still gets uh, it still has the ability to do some regenerative braking. I think it's pretty cool. But here's what happened on my first test drive with the, uh, the newly assembled motor frame over the tire. Um, the chain slipped off of the sprocket, it wrapped around the spokes, and when it wrapped around the spokes it gave a good yank on the, on the uh, sprocket of the motor and twisted the frame quite nicely. Here's a 
close-up view of the bent and twisted metal and uh, I did I did rebuild that but um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it here's a look through the spokes of the uh, of the main sprocket and you can see in between the spokes there are some tie wraps that I was using to secure the cassette from freewheeling uh, inside the hub there there were three tie wraps that end up, ended up ripping apart once the uh, once the chain slipped off of the uh, off of the sprocket and wrapped around the wrapped around the hub there's another look at the additional sprocket that I put onto the bicycle cassette so that you can see how it's been assembled and welded and here was my solution to the chain slack problem I uh, created a couple of idler wheels with o-rings in the center of these plastic casters the casters are just uh, bearing nylon casters that were purchased at Ace Hardware what they really are is uh, casters for the bottom of a glass sliding door so um, I repurposed those it was about ten dollars for the uh, for the two nylon casters with a couple of o-rings and uh, there's a couple of springs in between I don't know if you can see it yes you can see it in this photograph right here that keeps the tension on the chain and the uh, the casters are allowed to um, move back and forth pulling on the chain so whether I'm accelerating or decelerating the uh, the loose side of the chain is always having the slack taken up on it so that's it uh, the uh, what I what I plan to do next is I think uh, I'm going to take that motor and that frame off completely and I'm just going to side mount the motor directly onto the, the rear swing arm with a much shorter chain so that I can get rid of all of that clunky mechanics and that extremely long chain that's there now uh, it will look a lot cleaner and hopefully it will uh, be a lot less problematic than a uh, poorly engineered solution that I came up with. Um, in my next video, I'm going to be discussing some of the buoyancy experiments that Mark Dancy had asked me to conduct for him. I've got a couple of video clips of those experiments. It was a very interesting experiment, but uh, unfortunately uh, unfruitful. And I think uh, I think Mark Dancy would agree that uh, the results that I that I post uh, in that video will be quite conclusive. And uh, after that, I don't really know. I have a lot of projects on my plate. Uh, what I have done this time around is I've put up a uh, a poll a, where you can go and vote. So I would ask that you please go to altenergy.org, right on the main page. I have a, a poll for you to vote in, and the poll is, which project should I take up next? I've got the Vortex Field permanent magnet motor. I have the bat cell with the square one controller. Uh, I have the Mueller motor, uh, rocket stove, um, one or two other choices and then uh, don't know and don't care so whatever your whatever your decision is please go to altenergy.org vote in my latest poll and I uh, look forward to seeing you next time that's all for now Zero Fossil Fuel everyone take care hope you're well peace